Well, up until now, we focused on using weights as a way of looking at sensors. In this case, I have a program that loops around and around, and whenever touch sensor 1 is pushed, then it'll say, good job. And it'll do that forever. Now, the, the problem with weights is that the program stops and waits inside that block until it's satisfied and then goes on. And so if you have more than one sensor that you want to look at, that's going to be bad because it'll never get around to looking at the separate sensor. If I were to put another weight out here, for example, and then wait for something else to happen and say something else, it's never going to get here until this first one is satisfied. And that's generally a bad thing. So let's uh, see how switches will help us out here. I'm going to delete the weight. And under the orange tab, I'll bring up a switch instead. Now switches look at all the different sensors just the same way that weights do. It's set to touch sensor compare right now. And so whenever this touch sensor is pushed, it's going to take the top path. It's going to say, if it's true, take this path. And if it's false, take that path. So I could put my good job um, sound block up here. And uh, so this is going to seem like it's doing exactly the same thing as the previous program with a weight. It's going to spin around whenever the button is pushed. It's going to say good job. Whenever it's not pushed, it's going to take the bottom path, which right now doesn't have anything in it, and then continue. But I could put something else down here and make a really annoying program. Fantastic. So now, whenever the um, button is not pushed, it says fantastic. And whenever it is pushed, it says good job. And um, this truly annoying program will spin around forever. Where this gets interesting, though, is if you wanted to look at multiple sensors. So I'm going to grab another switch block and put it up here. And we're going to make this into touch sensor 2. So now, whenever this uh, sensor is pushed, it's going to take this top path. I'm going to move my fantastic up here and make the program slightly less annoying. So now, if the program uh, sees touch sensor 1 is pushed, it's going to say good job. And then it's going to come along and look at touch sensor 2. And if 2 is pressed, it's going to say fantastic. And then keep spinning around. So um, this is the way that you'd handle simple situations where you um, have multiple sensors to look at. In the next lesson, we'll talk about more advanced things you can do with switches. But right now, you know enough to do the exercise. So for the exercise, you just want to stay inside of a black circle, bouncing around and, and um, such. But if you hit something with your front touch sensor, you want to back up and turn uh, when that happens. So you'll have one of these switches that is a light sensor, and the other one that's a touch sensor. If you ever find yourself mixing weights and switches in the same program, that's generally going to be a mistake because weights, you'll recall, will cause the program to wait for that thing to happen and never continue around the loop.